it's the next level. I smashed my way to this bullshit reality to save Chrome. You saved the fucking world. I did. That one anyway. You still got them superpowers? <laughs> the power to drink a fifth of whiskey and not pay for it. Hey, he paid for my drink. He gets the story. I sure do. How about another one? Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we are going to be covering the movie Arch Arch Enemy. Enemy. (laughs) (laughs) Brain (laughs) Fart. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, no, the movie's not Brain Fart, everybody. It's Arch (laughs) Enemy, and that came out in 2020. And it was uh, led by Legion M. If you guys don't know what that is, it's pretty much a, I don't know, like a... I guess it's it's sort of I guess fans are able to pay into like, it pay into it but yes. man if you watch the title card for this one there was like several production companies so you know like it, yeah. it, it, it may have had a low budget but it had a bunch of different production companies involved with it now maybe those are just you know tiny companies that, that I don't know but I did note that it was a long you know, sequence of production companies at the beginning. But the second time I watched it, I was like, dang, this is a long... They had a lot of upstart people trying to help them out to get this movie going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, John Maganello, actually, if you remember him, uh, actually, Daphne on Run For Your Lives talked about him on, of all things, uh, what was it, Rampage? Yeah, Rampage. He's had a very he had a very small part. You, thought, you think he's going to be a major part of the movie, and then he's only in it, like, a few minutes, like... He's not not spoilers. Very long. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. But if you're, I mean, Rampage is from a while ago, so if you if you spoil on Rampage, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he also played Deathstroke at the very end, but it was a deleted scene in the, I, I think, the Justice League. Oh, okay. Movie. It was a deleted scene. He played, uh, you know, Deathstroke in that. Yeah. So you know, he's been around. We all know his face. He started hit as. As far as I'm concerned, I remember him from True Blood, and he was a werewolf in that. Yeah. And I was- still have not watched that show. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, cool. <laughs> but a lot of people know him as the husband of Sofia Vergara. So, and on top of that, he is such a big, huge dude. Mm-hmm. He's a deep-down geek and loves his superhero shows, <laughs> comics, Dungeons & Dragons. Come on. It's so cool that you, know, you got somebody who's that cool-looking. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's all into the same stuff that we are. Plus, yeah. he played Flash Thompson in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. So, Oh, that- okay. I didn't didn't even put that together. So, so yeah. We, we got him that. That's how I remember him uh, as uh, within sort of like the super, you know, superhero films and stuff right. like that. So he worked on this himself and got it set up. So... With Arch Enemy 2020, the synopsis is basically Max Fist claims to be a hero from another dimension who fell through time and space to Earth where he has no powers. No one believes his stories except for a local teen named Hamster. And which is, it's kind of vague, which is cool. And if I didn't really see this pop up until I started seeing commercials on my Facebook page and I'm like, oh, it's like I gotta watch this movie. It's when's it coming out? Oh, and I figured it out, and I said, "All right, Steve, we got to do this." This yeah. is yeah. This is an interesting concept because it, it is pretty much low budget, but it, it's got some really good heart in it as far as the the concept, the idea, and you could see how low budget it, they went because you know with him not having powers, he's a homeless guy on the street, and this kid follows him around, and he's telling these stories. 
and the way they actually create the stories is really cool in my opinion. Yeah, I I was I was not aware of this movie until you you suggested it, so I didn't know anything about it, and so it was really it, it's d- kind of different in the way it it works. You know, fla- kind of going back and forth between uh, kind of animation scenes with his flashbacks, and then mm-hmm. uh, with the real life life stuff was really really cool. And I loved. I think probably the biggest thing for me is I just loved the. the the uncertainness we have about his character, you know, even there's even parts of the movie and we'll get to this when we get to our discussion. There's parts mm-hmm. of the movie where you go, Oh, it is real. And then there's something, then something else will happen. And you go, well, no, maybe he's just a schizophrenic yeah. homeless guy. You know, it keeps you thinking, right? It keeps you, it keep, it kept me going back and forth, you know, up until really the end and the, the big reveal at the, at towards the very end. Mm hmm. So I really thought that was cool. I thought it was cool that, you know, and I think I have it in my notes that we we see, we we hear Max's story through his eyes, but we're also kind of seeing it through Hamster's eyes. And then at the end of the movie, we're going to get another perspective on Max's story yes. uh, when we get to Cleo. So I thought that was really, again, it's a cool, the, the character elements in this movie are really, really good. Yeah, I thought the same way. My general thoughts, basically, it, yeah, you know, I I just love the I, the use of the comics emotion to create mm-hmm. his thoughts or his him telling his history to Hamster and like certain situations that he was in, mm-hmm. and then on top of that, originally Nicolas Cage hmm. was was supposed to play Max Fist at some point at first, but I guess he turned it down. But then you know went to Joe Manganiello because and then it got into his lap. Because he was so into comics and Spectre Vision and, you know, Legion M funded everything that was going on. And Legion M, like we were talking before, was the same company that helped movies like Colossal with, uh, oh, I forgot her name now, Devil Wears Prada. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I don't, re- I don't, I don't, don't remember that one, so. Yeah, and Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Right. As well. So Mm -hmm. they they were movies that didn't have huge budgets, but they had known actors in them. And the fact that the actors stood by it and then they, I guess they gathered money to to get this going. So to me, anytime I I see a Legion M thing, I, I have to go see it. You know, they had a documentary about the Alien series too. And I picked that up as well. Hmm. So it, it, it's a good company, and it, I think the way they promote it is movies for the fans by the fans, meaning that it's fan-based where they set up funding for these movies to happen, which is pretty cool. It's a good concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I really, I like I said, it's it was really enjoyable even watching it the second time. Mm. So yeah, so we should get into our discussion points and uh, about this movie. You want to start off with sure. A- Sure. So for me, I went in almost completely cold. Like I I said earlier, I didn't know anything about this movie. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of started it. And as it it started going, I stopped the first time and went back to kind of reread the IMDb synopsis of it. And that helped me kind of see where it was going. So I understood what we were looking at. And, you know, the IMDb synopsis, sometimes it's a little too, like it gives you too much spoilers. But this one was really just you know, succinct enough, at least the one that I read, the one that's in the, in our document here mm. is, is it's succinct enough and it doesn't give anything away, but it, yet it, it tantalized me for the story. So I really, really liked that. And I like, again, I said that before about the going back and forth between the animation and uh, real life. Cool. Well, first off with me, well, I really like the concept of a kid trying to make it on his own within a story for, mm-hmm. For a media company, of all things, you know, yeah, Hamster's trying to he, – he dropped out of school despite what his uh, <laughs> his sister wants for him, even though she's doing illegal things. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and it's basically – or a comic company based on what he saw and heard from, from Max as being a homeless man. Mm-hmm. You know, he saw Max doing these things like he was pounding the wall. <laughs> he goes, dude, you're going to hurt your hand. He didn't really hurt his hand. And Hamster wanted to do something creative. As soon as, st- as, soon as he started hearing uh, Max say all these stories or give him all these stories of where he came from, who he was. The first thing you think of in being the viewer is like, is this like 
the movie Hobo with a Shotgun <laughs> with Rutger Hauer. But, you know, in this case, you know, y you think, okay, this guy's high on something and he's, you know, and just like what you were saying before, you're really not sure where to come from with this because everything is a motion comic from his description of his world, mm -hmm. his powers, what he did there. And, but, you know, all in all, I, I respect what his sister was doing with trying to bring her brother up alone, you know, and Max was there to give him some sort of focus. Mind you, he wasn't going to school, but the fact that, you know, it, it gave the kids to focus on his dreams of what he wanted to and this company that, you know, gave him a chance. So I, I thought it was pretty cool with that aspect. Yeah, and I, I like that you mentioned the, the thing about uh, about the drugs because you know we we only we see him buy some drugs, uh, Max. We see him buy drugs early on mm -hmm. in the film, which I didn't really catch the first time I watched it. So the second time, I really you can see what he's doing there. And you know, later we see him. I think we only actually see him do drugs like twice. I think, mm -hmm. but he you you have to think that he's been doing it throughout the whole film because these things that he's doing even without his superpowers you know, should be hurting. He should be, you know, like, like the whole punching the wall thing and, and stuff like that. And uh, I, I thought it was interesting too, that when hamster sees him do the drugs, he's very specific to say, don't let my sister see you do that. And I thought, and I've got some more on that later with, with, Indi when we talk about Indigo and Hamster, particularly, you've already hit on some of their their relationship. But mm -hmm. it just it just is really interesting the the fact that that the drugs they, they gave him the strength, they gave him the endurance, and that was also part of what confused us or or had us go, well, okay, is he really does he is he superhuman or is he just you know on drugs? And so yeah, yeah that's that's it was really that again that was that that tension of going back and forth between. Is he, is he for real or is he not? Exactly. Which will lead, and I'm going to combine my next two points together as one. Now that I read it, I already read it. I <laughs> see that uh, I already mentioned a bunch of these things already. But the action within the movie was really good. Mm -hmm. Especially when you see towards the end, he's punching the wall, the brick wall. And then you get that illusion of like him seeing that woman in there, that, mm -hmm. that vision. On top of that, him getting hit with the car. Yeah, <laughs> come on! I would have fell down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just got yeah. back up. There were so many things that Hamster was making him do that no human could really do, and not really like break a bone or something. Yeah, I don't care yeah. how high you are, <laughs> that guy yeah. was not hurting in any way. Yeah, so I thought it was pretty cool, and I I still have to add that I just love the motion comic stuff because it it added that whole comic book effect to right. it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, yeah. So I, I kind of want to talk a little bit. Let's talk about Hamster and, and Indigo. Let's kind of focus in on them uh, a little bit. And you mentioned already a little bit about, uh, you know, Hamster says that he dropped out of, of high school. His sister keeps saying she's trying to get him to go to college. And he's like, well, I dropped out of high school. How am I going to get to college? And she thinks she's going to be able to get enough money to bribe him into college. And it just seems... It, it's unrealistic. There, yeah, there were some interactions between them that I was kind of like didn't weren't realistic. And Are you also talking about somebody who makes blue meatballs. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it was a little, it was a little crazy there, and that she thinks that she's going to be able to get out of the the business when she's able to get them out of that apartment or whatever. And I did like, I really did like though. It was very touching when they talked about their dad, and she revealed to hamster that you you know dad was a storyteller too just like you want to be someone yeah. who tells stories and you can see that she's she's worried about him and not she doesn't want him to get into the, the drug dealing life even though she's in it she doesn't want him to get hurt uh she doesn't she doesn't want him doing stuff that's dangerous like this reporting on these crimes and after you know after they have that fight in the manager's office where she shoots that guy in the leg and then later we just see the emotional toll that all of this is taking on both of them mm. you know even to the point where there's a there's a point where hamster even almost loses faith in max because he sees max kill those guys and he's just like you know he kills the guys in the apartment and he kills the guys at the managers mm -hmm. he's doing drugs and it, it really 
there's that moment where Hamster loses his faith and, and him and the sister leave and they're going away and, and Ma uh, Max is left there by himself and he sees the manager go off with Cleo and that's a whole, we'll get into that probably more later. But I just, I, I just found that, that sibling relationship was, was at times it worked for me and at times it didn't work. Yeah. So. I, yeah. I, I feel the same way. But the one cool scene out of that was when Max shows up with Hamster and Indigo is being, I guess, accosted by the mm -hmm. thugs to get right. the money. And she lied to them. And the next scene, you know, Max just goes nuts. Yeah. And then he yeah. kills that guy. And that's when, you know, Hamster freaks out. Like, you're killing. No, you just killed that guy. Because let's get out of here. And they do. And then, of all things, I don't know if it was at that point or that scene mm -hmm. where he takes the methamphetamine. And of all things, the methamphetamine opens up his awareness for his uh, his powers and everything. Mm -hmm. I thought that was an interesting concept. It's like, okay, yeah. in this world, methamphetamine works for you. <laughs> yeah, he he has that whole monologue in that in the stairwell about the the chemical reaction that his that. It, that it's almost like uh, he's explaining that it's not that the the drug, like you said, I, I now I get it. Now that you say that, I think that's what he was indicating was that the drug kind of activates his powers so that he's able to do the things that he's able to do. And uh, and so that is an interesting concept of that thought of his physiology is so different that the drugs react to him differently and he reacts to them differently than. Yeah, not like a regular high, but for him, right, it activates certain things within his right. body chemistry. Yeah, whereas everybody else will just be tripping balls. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I like the the scenes where Max, when he talks about chromium, he talks about uh, his home, and he, he he talks about it being a parallel world from ours that he punched his way through dimensions. And and I, I said earlier, we see that story through Max's eyes and it isn't until the end when we get uh, Cleo kind of talking a little differently about the, the, what happened and that, you know, the people didn't love him really, that it was every, so there were too many people with superpowers and it was, and she was trying to stop that. But at the same time, it, it he talks about this divergence and I, I'm assuming that this divergence is what she was trying to correct with her Voight device. Cause she said the Voight device is going to make us human again, you know? And then at the end she, she says, well, I actually did what I intended. You're human. I'm human. We don't have superpowers here. Huh. And so, yeah, it, it was really, it was really interesting as we saw all that unfold. And as, as we slowly, we come to that realization that they're both from this parallel world. And I did have, there was one funny thought that I had that when, when hamster is listing all of his fist facts, he's got like, he's like fist fact number 57, his <laughs> crystal power fist is this, and he can crush that. Do you think all that was, was stuff that Max told him? Or do you think that maybe he, he embellished and made some of that up? I, I really think hamster embellished a little bit on that. Cause it, it doesn't sound like something Max would say. And it's just like, all right, he's trying to sell this to whoever, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. th this company as a story. So, exactly. so I think that was part of his storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, but the, really the fact that he's there with a camera, his phone camera, mm -hmm. and he's taking these little videos of him, like, jumping off things. And, like, yeah. what would he jump off a building or something? And then the car issue? and Yeah, he he's punching. Like he said, he's, he's doing these little videos of him. I don't know if he jumped off the building, but I know he's, he's got him. He's showing the video of him, him watching over the kind of watching over the streets, kind of like a Batman kind of character. Yeah. And you can really see that Hamster is playing up. The drama of who and you know the people are loving it because because that's what yeah. the the one woman says is oh man you you keep getting hits like this and getting views like this we'll put you on staff here you know because it's it's you know this is a a, a this truly is a movie that is uh you know except for the pandemic prior to the pandemic it's really it's true to the times to to our times right now that that people would be eating this kind of stuff up yeah, these kind of viral vid videos of this guy uh, running around like doing YouTube these... videos that are up that people exactly. just throw together and they have to watch over and over again. Like the guy getting hit in the face with the uh, the T. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Don't look that up, people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I another thing that I found interesting was that ending. You know, the mm-hmm. way it was left pretty much open ended in a way. Yeah. I knew that Indigo was important, but this made all the foreshadowing of her character come through in the very end, so it made sense. And yeah. that she was truly important to the story itself, you know, and and the way, you know, Cleo and him and, and the fact that she states, oh, I, we're human now. And when they go through oh, out the building onto the floor, she's bleeding out, but he's bleeding. What was it? Blue? Blue. Yeah. No, she she, she it was really cool because, I, I again, it was one of those scenes that I didn't pay close enough attention to the first time. So when I watched it for the second time, I really paid close attention to it because she says something about. I've been waiting for us to be in the same room, to be in close proximity, because I think there's going to be a chemical reaction or something, something like that. And that's yeah. when she shoots him, mm-hmm. and she and he bleeds blue. Yes. there in the in the the room, and she says, you know, she says it, it did it. We we have this, we're having this bond or whatever. And that's when one of my the one of my quotes that I have is that's when hamster hamster realizes everything's true. He sees that blue blood, and he's like, it's true. It's all it, true. Exactly. Everything he's been saying. And uh, so yeah, it was really really uh, interesting how they they revealed that. And then like you said, there at the very end, as Indigo is is crawling out of the building, which that's another. It's a little bit. Okay, I guess she was going for the money, is what uh, is is what we can say that she was crawling out of the building to go for the money, and she just happened to uh, wander into Max's blood, and that's when uh, I, I, she gets it. You know, you know, she. I guess she absorbs his power or something. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what it, it seemed, I guess. But it was a little that part for me was a little bit where I kind of went, oh, come on. Well, you when could've... you explain that whole Cleo thing and and Max thing being together and their powers it mm-hmm. kind of reminded me a little bit almost of like hancock with will Dude, smith i had that in my notes and i i i uh <laughs> I, I erased it because i was like no it's not exactly like hancock but it, but is it definitely, sounds like it yeah. yeah it's very similar yeah um so i had a, a couple more um Paul Shear uh, was the the guy that played Krieg, the guy who shoots himself in the head and has has the money. And uh, he's hilarious. He's a he's a comedian uh, and an actor. He's been on a lot of shows and movies and stuff. So as soon as I saw him in this, I was like, "That's Paul Shear," and uh, I thought that was that was really cool. And uh, I jumped both times when he shot himself. I I just jumped at it. So I, yeah. that was that was a, a good scene for us to to see Indigo's character. Yes. Now she did pull that trigger, you know. And, oh my god! Yeah, and that, that was a crazy click, scene. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> and that that click because it, it was almost like she got to this point where she realized she had no choice. I guess she, she had no choice but to to pull that trigger, and she was just resigned that whatever happens happens at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then the fact that the very next shot is is the one that, that kills Creek. Yeah, yeah, is is I was going to say mind blowing. <laughs> it was mind blowing, <laughs> and, and to all your listeners, do not do that at home, please. No, no, we do not, not condone that kind of thing. <laughs> I respect people who have guns. I am a gun holder. Yeah. No, you do not do that. Yeah, you don't so, play around. Don't play. Don't around play with around. Guns. Be respectful <sighs> of the 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 weapon, and the weapon will respect you. So. But uh, my final would be the the fact that we got the truth behind it all. So Mm -hmm. we see Max after, you know, with Cleo and they're on the pavement and just seeing that and having Indigo fly of all things. So we never really did get to see Max fly. But in this case, we get to see Indigo fly with his powers. Yeah. Um, And she gets blue. (laughs) <laughs> and so, she, she, she loves, yeah, just like her hair. Yeah. Um, I, I did have a couple quick, quick other ones. Uh, just some things about Cleo. We've already talked a, a little bit about her, but I, I like how she, you know, it was one of those things that, that it was like it, it dawned on me when he found that stress ball on the, the manager's desk. That was the same stress ball that Hamster was holding that he got from the Alyssa woman mm-hmm. that I, that I put it all, I it, like it, the first time I watched it, like it all came together and I was, Oh my goodness. Cleo is the big boss. And she somehow came to this world as well, mm-hmm. you know? And I was just like, that's crazy. And she's also the head of this viral empire. And, you know, she says she's been there for six years. So obviously when they, when they fell, they didn't, they didn't 
get to our world at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's a really interesting universe that they opened up that, uh, you know, unfortunately we're probably not going to, going to see anything more from, no. but it, it, it was really, really cool. And I, uh, uh, I thought it was interesting. Again, we already talked about the fact that her, her blood was red and his was blue. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, and, uh, you know, they, there's a few things they didn't show us that we just have to assume happened. And, you know, they showed us that gun store and I guess that's where he broke in to get all that gear that he was wearing that like riot gear Mm -hmm. that he had on. And, um, but that fight, the fight with the guy in the glasses, it was really good. They had a kind of a haze in the air. And so you really couldn't see exactly what was happening, but you could definitely tell that this guy was holding his own mm-hmm. against Max. And then, of course, Indigo shoots him in the leg and uh, tells him to leave. Um, and that moment at the end, you already said that where we revealed that it's all true. Indigo has that moment when she's absorbing that blood and when she's getting, getting Max's powers that she sees the other side. She sees the parallel world world, just like max was seeing it so i thought all that was really really cool for the movie to 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 give to us so yeah so you had a couple of quotes yeah just a couple little quotes here that i that i keyed in on that i thought was i've already told the one that that when uh, hamster sees the blue blood he says it's true but there's also that in that first meeting where he meets that the Alyssa woman he says this is not the world in here and he's trying to get her to understand that he can show the world that 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 this viral these videos that they're putting out with cats with laser eyes that's not the world that they need to show something real uh and then he comes up with max who is real or not real we don't know until the end so i thought it was really kind of a cool little quote there Hmm, cool so you had some comic news um actually no i wanted to get into ratings Oh, okay. so what what would you rate this movie on, wow. on a comic level? Uh, one to ten, I would say. One to ten. Um, you know, I don't know if I'd go back and watch it again necessarily. It's a you know, it, it's a solid B. I'd give it an eight. It's a really? you know, it's a it's oh, a okay. seven and a half to an eight. I'm not really big on. You know, somewhere in between that seven yeah. and a half to an eight, kind of not not horrible, but not like not great and not, and not your go to movie. You know, no, it's not going to yeah. be my go to movie. I'm probably not going to go back to to watch it again anytime, anytime soon. soon. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But I'm going to give it a high a high enough rating that that because I liked it and I would recommend that people watch it. Yeah, very much. And I'm I when you said you were going to give it an eight, I was like, wow, I was going to give it like a seven point (laughs) five. So I was like, yeah, because to me, it reminded me it's like, oh, it's entertaining. It it showed promise. It gave a good story, something I would definitely watch again, but not anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And it kind of reminded me of like, hey, when I was in high school, Punisher came out with Dolph Lundgren. Now, mind mm. you, it wasn't the true comic book version of Punisher, but overall, it had a good story to it, but we didn't get that comicness of the Punisher, but right. it alluded to it. So with this, right. it, it fell in the same and similar format of that for me. So that that's the reason why I gave it a 7.5. It's not something I'm just going to jump to right away. It's like, hey... Uh, I'm not going to watch, you know, Infinity Wars and Endgame again. No, I'm going to watch Infinity Wars and Endgame again. I will. But with these, I'll be like, eh, there's nothing on in the afternoon. Yeah. I've watched everything I could possibly think at this point. What's something to pass the time that I could really enjoy? And that would probably be it. You know, it it wouldn't be like a guilty pleasure for me. Not Mm -hmm. to uh, throw anything out from Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, (laughs) but... It's something that it, I would occasionally watch, but yeah, you know. yeah. And like I said, I'm 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 not going to give it a super low rating because I I want people to know that I do recommend. Yeah. that it's, it's watchable. It's it's a good. It's it, like I said, I recommend people at least check give it, it a one time watch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, as you were saying before with comic news, well, if any of you listeners read the Walking Dead comics or are a fan of the show. Well, Michonne shows up on a panel of another of Robert Kirkman's book that came out this month, a lovely little Easter egg in another book where, you know, that Kirkman basically snuck in. And he's done this before and uh, other image properties that he takes part of. So you see her sword and the villain of the comic in the panel over her body. Her head is all messed up. 
So they basically killed Michonne in space at this point. And the issue is Solid Blood number 17. And the way the comic is printed, it's printed like an old school comic paper style, you know, comic on the inside. So it was fairly thin. I'm like, wow, for three bucks. I'm like, what the? Mm. So, but it was actually, I read the comic and it wasn't that bad. It's not something I'm going to jump into as far as like a uh, comic book to start reading now. But I thought when I heard about this, I was like, oh, I got to pick it up to see that panel. Well, I did. Yeah. So it that's something cool. We got a lot of things to look forward to in the coming months. So WandaVision is going to be coming out soon to Disney Plus, And I think that's the 15th. Yeah, January 15th, I believe. And we got Snowpiercer coming up too, so we might have dual duty. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to take a look at what we're what we're gonna do. And uh, see, I think Wandavision is only like six episodes, so we might be able to do some brief Wandavision type stuff. Sure. Uh, while we do Snowpiercer, because I think Snowpiercer is the twelfth. Let me check that right. I thought that now. was the twenty fifth or something. You might be right. You might be right. Uh, 25th. Yeah, you're right. So so we've got a little bit of time. So we if WandaVision is the 15th, we'll have at least, you know, one or two episodes of that mm -hmm. before the first episode of Snowpiercer comes cool. out. So, yeah, we'll try to do our best to keep up with both. Or if not, we might double up on uh, an episode or do a duel. So we yeah. can do Snowpiercer, whatever episode, and then WandaVision right after that. Yeah. So yeah, that like way I said, you, you guys could... Uh, keep up and that way you know you could skip for whatever you don't really want to watch along sure. with us so that way it gives you an option so my only podcast recommendation uh this week is house podcastica will be starting their cobra kai season three coverage they're covering two episodes a week over there i believe they record on sometime on saturdays mm -hmm. so those episodes drop uh Friday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, something like that. Cool. Um, or no, I guess they're all out. That's so – never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're all out now, but House Podcast is only going to be covering two episodes a week. So Yes, yeah. And uh, I really enjoy you know, listening to them when I cover Cobra Kai. Unfortunately, I'm one of those people that can't really go week to week, so I had to binge watch all of Cobra, Cobra Kai Season 3. <laughs> but thankfully, Don't spoil anything for me. I, no, I only no, watched the th first two. So. Thankfully, my my memory sucks for all the in-between. <laughs> there are key points, yes, but I will be re-watching when I do submit any feedback. I didn't submit this week for uh, the first two episodes, but I'll do it for next week. Yeah. But uh, I think, yeah, it's pretty cool to listen to what Rima and Jason and I've, I, is Richard, Richard going to be on it? Yeah, I believe yeah. it's Richard. Okay. So, yeah, I'll I'm leave not, that for I'm them. not naming people on voicemails anymore because I messed up names last uh, week. Ah, so. don't worry about it, dude. I, <laughs> I, I do the same thing. But you could also hear Rima on the podcast, the uh, podcast network on Strange Indeed with her coverage with Ben who's part of the Next Level Podcast Network as well, and they're covering The Stand. So I'm not sure if they covered Episode 3 yet, but if you have access to CBS All Access, I recommend uh, watching The Stand because I started really getting into it after the first two episodes. So. Yeah, it's really good. I, I watched the third episode. I haven't sent my feedback in yet, but I've watched the third episode. So they record on Monday nights. So Yeah. So I got a little bit of time on that one. Cool. All Same right. Here. So uh, this podcast that you're listening to right now can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, whatever podcast player of choice uh, you have. If there's a chance or opportunity to give us a review, throw us a review on there. Uh, hopefully it'll be a good one. I don't, you know, uh, but, you know, give us some <laughs> feedback. Let us know uh, how, how you think we're doing. Uh, we also have a website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. We have a Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Uh, we have an email address that you can email us uh, panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to is spelled out right there in the middle the number one at gmail.com we are also on youtube under panels to pixels podcast go on there subscribe give us a thumbs up and let us know what you uh, what you're thinking um <laughs> mark have you put any thought into next week well, next week, I believe you and I decided that we're going to do Wonder Woman 1984. We're not sure exactly if we're going to have a guest on, but we'll we'll see what they have to say. If not, you and I will be covering Wonder Woman 1984 and reviewing that particular movie that came out. 
Uh, everybody could see it on HBO Max for, I believe, about a month. And it's also in theaters, so they're trying to make their money. So mm -hmm. I suggest if you're really uh, in the idea of actually going out to the movies, go out and see it. You know, give these people some money to do it. If not, be an HBO Max subscriber and go watch Wonder Woman on your own TV. And uh, let us know your thoughts on that, too. Just put them in the comments down below on Facebook when we do publish this on our Facebook page or just send an email yeah. to because uh, we we love – this movie seems to have a lot of mixed reviews amongst a lot of fans as well as professionals. And a, a couple of people I know in the medium uh, – in the actual media business, we had a discussion recently and – I think out of the four of us, myself and one other person were on the sides of saying it was enjoyable. It wasn't anything great, but you'll hear more when we, when Steve and I and possibly our guest co-host comes on and what I thought about it. Yeah. So. Exciting. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be here, heard here right on Panels to Pixels podcast on the Next Level Podcast Network, right on Panels to Pixels. So you could hear me here. But I also have another podcast called Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that you could find on the PyroCore Entertainment Network. And with that, we cover all action, suspense, adventure films, thriller films. And just recently, actually, I was in the middle of editing before we actually started recording <laughs> Steve and I tonight. So I that will be up around the time that this uh, or probably before this podcast goes up. But you could hear my friend Jerry and I talk about the movie 1982 movie the thing i sent you a voicemail on that did it get it in time yes you did so excellent. i have to edit that in <laughs> excellent excellent but uh, cool. you could you could check jerry out uh, and myself out on that on uh an adrenaline cinema podcast and if you're interested like i said we that podcast could be found on anywhere it'd be like spotify tune in you know deezer these are yeah, yeah, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that good know, stuff. I don't know podcast players. <laughs> so this, this, we're on. Uh, I, from what I recall, we're on a total of twenty-two to twenty-four. Nice podcast. I, I watch choice. a lot of I watch <laughs> a lot of TV shows and I submit feedback to a lot of our friends' podcasts. But really, this is my first love. Panels to pixels, and uh, I enjoy being on here. I'm, I'm thankful to the Next Level Podcast Network uh, for putting up with us for another year. And uh, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and you I'm could excited. also hear Steve on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast when his movies come up as well, Absolutely. too. We'll Absolutely. always keep you guys aware of when Steve's on. <laughs> so with that, we just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Thanks for listening. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>